All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a high converting OnlyFans account. Hey, I'm Bjorn Olsen from yourofempire.com, owner of the OnlyFans Empire, an OnlyFans management agency managing girls in the top 1% from all over the world, completely remotely. No office, hence the different hotel rooms and all my different videos. Check us out at yourofempire.com or at yourofempire on all major social media platforms. But for now, let's get back to the video. So for the purpose of this video, we're going to assume you just got a new client and they haven't done OnlyFans before or the account they're setting up is fresh, brand new, right? So the first thing you're going to get them to do is set it up. I say set it up, but like the basics. So first thing you're gonna do is set it up with email, password or whatever. Then they're gonna verify it. So what OnlyFans are gonna do, OnlyFans are going to request some form of identification from the client. They're gonna submit photos of it. And then OnlyFans are gonna take two or three days to get back to you before they verify it. Now, a common issue with this is that OnlyFans are knowing for knocking back the verification process due to slight imperfections in the photos. So some corners are missing, some photos might be a little uneven. OnlyFans are like, seem to be very anal with this, no pun intended. But if this happens, just tweak the photos and resubmit and we'll get there eventually. So this process normally takes a few days. So you need the client to do this for you because this is the only part of this whole process that you can't do. So you're gonna get the client to set it up, email, password, whatever, submit for verification. Then they're gonna upload their banking info. Now, later on, you might wanna change this depending how you want to invoice the client. But for now, once they're done verifying, OnlyFans will ask them to enter their banking information where they'll just enter theirs. Keep it simple for the purpose of this vid, but later on, you know, you might put agency banking info down the track or whatever. But you'll get the client to do it for now. So bank info. And then just get them to upload a display pic. Oh, look, you can do this if you want. As far as I'm aware, I wouldn't say there's a display picture that is more or less converting when it comes to getting subscribers to subscribe. Just get the display picture to look good. Nice looking, nice looking photo, just as though they were putting it on their Facebook page. So just common sense applies there. Then same thing with the banner picture. Same thing. I can't say whether there's a certain type of banner picture that is more or less converting than another. Just get the banner picture to look good. It's somewhat provocative. No nudity or anything like that. Just a nice banging picture where the client looks sexy as fuck, all right? So that's just the basic stuff. That's the easy stuff, no rocket science there. Now where the strategy starts to come into it is from here onwards. So for starters, running out of room here. So for starters, pricing, subscription prices. So in my opinion, you're gonna to wanna to set the subscription price from anywhere between eight to $17, depending on the attractiveness. So depending on the attractive, uh, attractiveness, of the client. I don't mean to sound rude or harsh. Let's be honest here, this is the business we're in. I don't make the rules, all right? So for pricing, anywhere between eight seventy dollars depending on the attractiveness of client. What you can also do is if the client is more on the lower end of the attractiveness scale, you can set it as $17 and then just add a 50% discount. So it'll be like, what, $8.50 or something? Okay, so apparently my camera just stopped recording like halfway through that, so I was just talking to myself for like 15 minutes. So that is why there is suddenly some drawings on here, because I was doing all this while the camera turned off. So where were we? So talking about pricing, I think what I was saying before the camera cut out was that for a less attractive client, you can set the price on the higher end and then just bang on a 50% discount because then it'll bring it down to something like that anyway. And then the subscriber is as likely to click on that as they are with that, but they'll feel like they're gonna bargain there. So, could go either way. So, that's up to you, have a play around. You can also just try doing $17 for a less attractive client and see how you go, but I recommend that not to because you'll probably be wasting your time. You need to establish some social credibility first or some social proof in the form of the numbers on your account. Because when a subscriber goes to 
the OnlyFans account. Before I subscribe, we're going to see a few little numbers. So I'm pretty sure I started drawing this on after the camera stopped. So <laughs> we'll go over it again. So the numbers they're going to see when they click on the account, they're going to see the number of images, they're going to see the number of videos. I can't remember if they see the number of fans, but they see the number of likes. So obviously, the higher these numbers, the more social proof the account gets, and then the more it justifies the higher price tag. Now, I know it's not fair, but an attractive girl can get away with the higher price point, regardless of the social proof, because in essence, her attraction is the social proof, because a guy knows that there's a lot of competition out there, if that makes any sense. So, not fair, but it's just how it is, so you work with what you got, all right? So, as I was saying, anywhere between 8 to $17, depending on the attractiveness of clients, if you've got a more, you know, a less attractive client, you can feel free to do $17 and make a 50% discount. Whatever you want to go with, play around with it. What you're also going to do, which is what I also wrote on here before the camera started to shit itself, was that on top of the subscription price, make sure to add some discount bundles. So you're going to add a discount for three months, add a discount for six months, and a 12-month subscription, because obviously you want to incentivize the person to subscribe for more than one month, because then you've got them in your hooks. So, I don't know, for three months you go like 30% off, for six months, you go 40% off. For yearly, you go 50% off. Something like that. To incentivize the person to be subscribed for longer than a month, obviously. So, after this, now there is the bio. Now, I'm circling these things as though I'm making it easier to look at the bio, but it's actually just making everything messier. So, think of the bio like a product description. So say you want to look for a ring light to use for a YouTube video. You're going to go online, you're going to look for a ring light, you're going to look for a thumbnail for a ring light, whether it's eBay, Amazon, whatever store. You're going to click on the thumbnail and you're going to read the product description. Now, while you're reading the product description, you are subconsciously making up the mind in your head whether to make the leap and spend your hard-earned dollars on that item. A buyer does just the same thing. You want to tell the person what you're willing to give them in return for their dollars. So here's an example bio that I've used a lot that has proven to work quite well. So here's an example bio. Hi, I'm whatever the client's name. Hi, I'm Mandy. An exclusive look into my spicy life for my true fans. I reply to all DMs, no spam or shout outs, over 50 plus pixel vids. Just put like a big number there. Um, because obviously when you're starting out, that number is not going to match the number of images that the subscriber sees when they read your bio. So if you decide to put a big number there, make sure you get to work, start scheduling, start uploading those photos to the feed, baby, because you want the number of images displayed at the top of your profile when someone clicks on it to match or be larger than this number here you've got in your bio. Otherwise, it's false advertising. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to say, over 50 plus picks or vids. Solid play. And depending on where you ask the client office. So it could be boy, girl, couples, whatever. But, you know, you're at least going to assume that they do solo play, right? Otherwise, why do they have an only fans? Custom content requests. My opinion, it would be foolish to start an only fans and not offer the ability to purchase custom content. Because selling custom content is like the holy grail of premium price product. Like, if a subscriber asks you to make a specific video for them, you're going to chuck a big fat old number on there. So, in my opinion, it would be foolish not to offer that service, because that's like the holy grail of content seller. Then, after that, fetish friendly, whether the client is kinky, into fetishes or not, just put it there anyway, because you're trying to appeal to the masses. And, who knows, the sub Subscriber might think of a fetish that you haven't even thought of that, hey, apparently you're into and you didn't even realize. Like, looking at toenails or something. <laughs> that you didn't realize. Anyway, so, when you do this bio, these are obviously dot points. I know it's hard to tell. But make the dots as, like, different emojis. I explained this in the last video I made that apparently wasn't recording. So that's how these little drawings up here 
But for the dot point, just make like a lot of the smiley face, the dots, arrowy tick, whatever. Because it's going to, you know, it's going to catch the attention. You'll notice that, you know, a product description, just like an eBay item for a ring light, is written in a way that captures your attention and keeps you reading. Whether it's through different font sizes, spacing, emojis, or whatever. So the same applies to the bio. You don't want it to look boring. So for these dot points here, I'd say just put in like emojis and stuff like that. So that's that. So we've got the bio. Now after that, this is starting to set it up for after the subscriber has subscribed. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm always sitting down in videos, it's because I'm six foot four and this was the tallest flipboard I can find and I just tower over it. So if you're wondering why I'm always sitting down, that's why. Okay, so now we've got the welcome message. This is the automated DM that is sent to a person that's subscribed. So as soon as this person subscribes to the profile, they get an automated DM that looks like it's coming directly from you. And this is what I reckon you say. Hey. How are you? Seriously, that's it. Because you want to, every person that subscribes to feel like you are talking directly with them. So in my experience, an automated message that looks like it has been singled out and sent to just them always gets a response. So if you set this as your welcome message in settings, set as your automated message as soon as the subscriber subscribes, I can guarantee that you'll get a response to that. Because you just want to start by instigating engagement, build some rapport, then you can get sell. So next is the welcome post, plus a pin, as in pin to the top. So this is going to be the post that gets pinned to your top of your profile. So as soon as a, a subscriber subscribes and they start scrolling down your profile, this is going to be the first post they see. So here is an example uh, welcome post that I have used quite a bit and I found it to be quite effective in combination with a cute photo. So the post reads as follows. Welcome to my page, blah, blah. Mandy here, ready to fuck up your feed with some fire photos and vids. I actually deliberately wrote that because I didn't know if YouTube would like penalize me anyway for actually like writing swear words. So anyway, welcome to my page. Mandy here, ready to fuck up your feed with some fire photos and vids. I'm sassy, sweet, and looking to make some close connections with my fans. I love making customs, playing with toys, and making you feel like the girl of your dreams is right there on your lap. So don't be shy, I'm ready to play. So you write that, then add a cute photo. Think of it like a photo that you would upload to like your Tinder profile or Facebook photo. A photo that is cute and not sexy, it's just, it's just cute. It makes subscribers go, oh, she's a real person. You know what I mean? So you'll upload that and then pin to the top. So as I said, when a person subscribes, stop clicking on your profile, the first thing they'll see is this pin to the top. And that's it. If this helped you in any way, smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and I'll see you on some other videos.